spearhead has multiple uses when used with the blade. It can be used as a rough deep gauge as shown in this video. also be used to scribe 90 and 45 degree angles on your layout. Mass production methods involve the use of computer controlled machines, press tools, molds, jigs and guides, so individual pieces do not need to be marked out accurately before being cut and shaped. However, if it's not practical to set up and use a CNC machine for a one-off part or a small batch of parts, or you don't have access to an appropriate CNC machine, then materials must be marked out accurately in order to make parts that are the correct size and shape. This video will show you some of the tools that are used to measure and mark out materials accurately. So, let's start with some basic marking out tools. Pencils are used to mark out wood. Fibre tip pens are used to mark out plastics. A pen with an extra fine nib should be used for accurate marking out. The letters and numbers on pencils show the hardness of the pencil lead. The higher the H number, the harder the pencil lead. HB equals medium hard. The higher the B number, the softer the pencil lead. A scriber has a hardened steel point and is used for scratching lines on metal. A scriber is always used with a straight edge or a tri-square to mark straight lines. A marker knife is used to score lines on wood, where the wood will be cut with a saw or a chisel. It is always used with a straight edge or a tri-square. A marker knife is sharpened on one side only, on the left for left-handed people, on the right for right-handed people. This is so that the flat side of the marker knife blade can be placed next to a straight edge or steel rule. This allows the line to be scored tight up against the straight edge or steel rule. Dividers are used for two things, one for drawing circles and arcs, two for stepping off equal measurements. The trammel or beam compass is used for scribing large circles and arcs and for stepping off equal measurements. Odd leg calipers are used to score lines parallel to a straight edge on metal. A centre punch is used to mark the position of holes that will be drilled in metal. The point is ground to 90 degrees. A dot punch is used to mark dots along a scribed line or circle. The dots make the line clearer and easier to see. The point of a dot punch is ground to 60 degrees. A marking gauge is used for marking lines on wood parallel to a straight edge along the grain.
A cutting gauge is similar to a marking gauge, but it has a steel blade instead of a point to mark lines. It is used to score lines across the grain. A mortise gauge has two points and is used to mark parallel lines on wood, especially when marking out the mortises and tenons for mortise and tenon joints. The pins are first set to the width of the chisel that will be used to cut the mortise. Then the guide is adjusted so that the lines will be marked the correct distance from the edge of the timber. The mitre square is used for measuring and marking 45 degree angles. This is a woodworker's tri-square. It has a wooden stock and a steel blade. The blade is riveted to the stock. There is a protective brass strip fixed to the stock to reduce wear on the stock. Tri-squares are used for marking lines at right angles to a straight edge and for checking right angles. This is an engineer's square. It's made of steel. The blade is riveted to the stock but the rivets are not usually visible against the polished steel. There is usually a notch cut into the stock to ensure that things can fit tightly into the corner. A sliding bevel is used for copying angles. It has a blade that can be adjusted to any angle and then held firmly in place by tightening the screw. The center square is used to find the center of circular objects. It works because of this fact. When an angle that is tangential to a circle is bisected, the bisector passes through the center of the circle. The center square is placed on the end of a round bar or other circular object and the line is scribed. The centre square is then moved to a new position and another line is scribed. The lines cross at the centre of the round bar or other circular object. A combination set is a set of three marking out tools that fit onto a grooved steel rule. The three marking out tools are a protractor, a combination mitre square and tri square and a centre square. The protractor is used for measuring and marking out angles. The combination mitre square tri square is used for marking lines at right angles and at 45 degrees to a straight edge. The centre square is used for finding the centre of discs and the centre of the end of round bar. A bradle is used for piercing holes in wood. All but very small screws require a pilot hole to be drilled in timber so the screw does not split the wood. The diameter of the pilot hole should be the same size as the core diameter of the screw. Small holes may be pierced into softwood instead of being drilled. A bradle may be used to create small holes for screws in softwood. A bradle is ground to a chisel shaped point and is pierced into timber across the grain. The chisel shaped point cuts the wood fibres instead of splitting the wood. A surface gauge is a tool that holds a scriber in a set position. It is used for marking horizontal lines. 
The scribing block is a simple version of a surface gauge. Scribing blocks and surface gauges are always used on smooth, flat surfaces, for instance on a surface plate. Surface plate is simply a polished flat surface usually made of cast iron. Marking out tools such as surface gauges and V-blocks are stood on it when marking out. A V-block is used to hold round bar, usually with the aid of a clamp. An angle plate is used to hold things vertically while they are being marked out or machined. A straight edge is like a ruler, but it has no measurement markings. It is used with a pencil or a scriber to draw straight lines and for testing the straightness of things. Straight edges over a metre long are often made of box section aluminium. We use templates so that we can mark out shapes quickly and easily. Some commonly used templates are circle templates, ellipse templates and dovetail templates. Dovetail templates are used to mark out the angled lines for dovetail joints. The angle of a dovetail template will vary according to the wood that will be joined. A template intended for softwood is angled at 1 to 5, in other words, five units along and one unit inwards. A template intended for hardwood is angled at one to eight, in other words, eight units along and one unit inwards. A template may be made so that a shape, for instance a rabbit shape, can be marked out quickly and easily. A template can help us mark out identical shapes lots of times and a template can help us draw repeating patterns like the wavy decoration on this balcony. The wavy design was first drawn on paper, cut out using scissors, then transferred onto the MDF. The wavy shape was cut out using a jigsaw, smoothed, then the repeating design was drawn onto the long lengths of timber that were used to make the balcony. The heart-shaped cutouts were also marked out using a paper template. Finally, I'd like to thank you for watching and I hope that you found this of art. If you've ever wanted a precision ruler, something that is super, super precise, I mean, it's got a satin chrome finish and it's tempered stainless steel. Just a work of art. Give you a good look here at the ruler. It's got a really nice weight to it. I mean, this is probably the nicest ruler I have ever held in my hand. And Vernier Caliper. In this video we will learn about Vernier Caliper. Vernier Caliper is a measuring instrument which can be used to measure height, thickness, depth and internal and external diameters of the various components. It works on the principle of difference in two scale. It can measure dimensions accurately up to 0.02 mm or 0.001 inches. Where 0.02 mm or 0.001 inches is the least count of the vernier caliper. Let us see its various parts in detail. It has main scale, vernier scale, external measuring jaws, internal measuring jaws, lock screw, 
and depth measuring bar. Main scale. Main scale has a markings which are engraved on it. On top, the markings are in inches, and on the bottom they are in mm. Vernier scale. Vernier scale has a marking on top and bottom. Top scale is for taking readings in inches, and bottom scale is for taking readings in millimeters. There are two types of vernier scales. Forward vernier. Backward vernier. If on the bottom there are 50 divisions, whose total length is equal to the length of 49 division on main scale. This type is called forward vernier. On the other hand suppose 50 divisions on vernier scale are equal to 51 divisions on main scale. Such a vernier is called backward vernier. In this video we will discuss about forward vernier. External measuring jaws. In external measuring jaws, there is a fixed jaw which is a part of main scale and a sliding jaw which is attached to a vernier scale. It is called sliding jaw because it slides with vernier scale. These jaws are used for measuring external dimensions, such as outer diameter, length, and thickness of components. Internal measuring jaws. Here also, there is a fixed and a sliding jaw. These jaws are used for measuring internal dimensions, such as inner diameter, slot dimensions, and distance between two parallel surfaces. Lock screw. On top of vernier scale there is one lock screw, which helps in clamping the movable jaw in a particular position, after jaws have been set accurately over the job being measured. This arrests further motion of the movable jaw, so that the operator can note down the reading in a convenient position. Whenever the vernier slides over the main frame, a depth measuring blade also slides in and out of the beam of the caliper. This is a useful attachment for measuring depth to a high degree of accuracy. Now let us see how the least count of vernier instrument is calculated. As we discussing forward vernier scale caliper, we knew that 50 divisions on the vernier scale is equal to 49 divisions on the main scale, equating both. 50 vernier scale divisions equals 50 minus 1 main scale divisions. Therefore, 1 vernier scale division equals 50 minus 1 divided by 50. 1 vernier scale division equals 49 divided by 50 millimeters. Therefore, we knew least count equals 1 main scale division minus 1 vernier scale division, which is equal to 1 minus 49 divided by 50 millimeters which is equal to 0.02 millimeters. Therefore, the total reading will be equal to main scale reading plus vernier scale divisions into least count. Let us see how to take measurement of a component using vernier caliper. First completely close the vernier caliper. These are the surfaces where you can take a measurements. And you can also see couple of gaps. These are not the places to take measurements. Now let us take measurement of a object. When we hold this object between the two jaws, we first take reading from the main scale, and we can see that zero of the vernier scale coincides exactly with 40th division of the main scale. In this case the size of the object is 40 millimeters. No vernier scale reading is required since the 40 mm line of the main scale coincides with zero of the vernier scale. Let us take another example, in this case again hold the object between the two jaws. In this example we can see that the size of the object is not exactly 40 millimeters. It is between 40 and 41 millimeters. In this case we require vernier scale to get accurate measurement. But this time I'm only going to draw the main part of it first. Now you see the marked number from 0 to 10. Each of these numbers represents the tenth of the millimeters. We can see one of the vernier scale mark lines up better than others. Let me give you a hint where to look on the vernier scale, where mark lines up. You see how our zero line of the vernier was more than halfway between the marks, that means the vernier scale will line up more a little past halfway. Now we can see that the line which lines up better than other, it looks like 6 is lining up better, the 6 means 0.6 millimeters. But this vernier caliper can measure more accurate than that. Let me redraw all the lines. Now see that the line before 7 lines up better. Now what is the value of that point? We already knew least count of the vernier is 0.02 millimeters. That means each of these divisions are 0.02 millimeters, 
Now let us count, this 6 would be point 0.6, next point. Point 0.62, next point. Point 0.64, next point. Point 0.66 and, the coinciding point will be point 0.68. Therefore, the length is. Main scale reading which is 40 mm, plus this point 0.68 mm, which is equal to 40.68 mm. If you are still confused, the another easy way of measuring is to see which line of vernier is coinciding with main scale. Here in this case at 34th line, therefore, 34 is our vernier scale division. And you can remember we already seen total reading is equal to main scale reading plus vernier scale reading into list count. This will give you 40.68 millimeters. Various precisions, both in metric and English units. In every case, it is the thread pitch of the spindle screw that makes each type different. The thread pitch is the distance between two adjacent thread crests. In this example, the thread pitch of the micrometer spindle screw is precisely one half millimeter. Each revolution of the thimble moves the micrometer spindle one half millimeter. The micrometer has a reading line on the sleeve. The vertical graduations on the top of the reading line each represent a single millimeter. The vertical graduations below the reading line indicate half millimeters. The beveled edge of the thimble is graduated into 50 divisions. Since a single revolution of the thimble moves the spindle one half millimeter, each thimble graduation equals one fiftieth of one half millimeter or one one hundredth of a millimeter. The thimble is rotated and the spindle advanced until the feature is held between the anvil and the spindle face. To read this micrometer, add the number of millimeters and half millimeters visible on the sleeve to the number of hundredths of a millimeter indicated by the thimble graduation, which coincides with the reading line on the micrometer sleeve. 